but how perhaps what I saw or the piece that I got was maybe different than the piece somebody else got. Um, and I see this service as a celebration, a coming together, if you will. I grew up here in Chicago, went to school in Florida, and I've been a lot of traveling since then. Uh, and I came home a month ago, um, and I walked into my great aunt's house, and I see one of my great uncles. And the first thing he yells out is Moses. So even my mother's side of the family calls me Moses because I think that was like. Honestly, if I didn't open my mouth and speak without the accent, it probably wouldn't believe me if I said it wasn't here. Um, but I, I think that's another uh, testament to who he was as a person. You know, he, he grew up in Ibarra, but he came here, you know, and wherever he went, he found love, he found family. You know, my mother and her family still consider some family. So, um, so I'm just here to be here to, to have everybody. Dr. Ademinpe is survived by Oluwa Toyi, child Tomitope Olubukade, and grandchildren Toby Loba, Michael Olubode, and Esther Adeola Olubode. Former wife, Denise Ademinpe, former joiner, uh, children, Phillips Oladeji, Tizina, also known as Nina uh, Olashade, Grandchildren Tierra Olubumi Slaughter, Ari and Ariane Olade Slaughter, Antonine, child Steve Bamidebe, and wife Evelyn Adebimpe Nye Alder, child Ibibola, Ibib, Ibibola uh, Ayodele. He was preceded in death by both parents as well as his sisters, Mrs. Motunrade. Adebimpe Dabiri, and Mrs. Bolade Okonilade. He was born to Gilbert Adedapo Oladeji Adebimpe and Felicia Ibiwala Adebimpe, or in Ogundele, on the 1st of February, 1957. His baptism was solemnized at St. Andrew's Church, Fajoye in the Diocese of Ibadan. Chief Ayurinde's education began in his hometown of Ibadan, where he would attend the Christ Apostolic Church, Irefi Ibadan Primary School, and Christ Apostolic Church Grammar School, Ibadan. As a youth, he was an avid member and decorated leader in the Boy Scouts of Nigeria. Following the successful completion of his school certificate awarded by the West African Examinations Council, he would travel abroad to continue his studies in the United States. He would earn a certificate in administration and labor and human resources from the Roosevelt University College of Continuing Education and an Associates of Applied Science and Certification in Petroleum Technology from Northwestern Michigan College a Bachelor of Arts and Masters of Science in Occupational Education from Chicago State University, and finally, a Doctor of Philosophy in Engineering Management from California Coast University. In addition to his academic curriculum, he also pursued trainings and certifications in a variety of subject matter based on his hobbies and general curiosities. Among these were things such as certif certifications for audio amplifiers and receivers training, video cassette recorder servicing, Cisco entry networking technician training, Six Sigma green belt and yellow belt training, and polysomnographic poly training. He was truly the embodiment of what it means to be both a gentleman and a scholar. Chief Irene Day would also go on to pursue very diverse eclectic career paths as well. Early on in his life in the U.S., he would pursue careers at Xerox and Montgomery Woods Department 
technical special specialties. He would go on to co-own an engraving shop in downtown Chicago with Ben Y. Finis. He went on to create Moses Enterprises, LLC, where he would provide video services, fi services. Finally, he would return to his love, education, working in the Chicago public schools at his alma mater, at his alma mater, Chicago State University. Finally, Chief Ayurinde was an avid member of his community. He was conferred the chieftaincy title Me Balogun of Awaye District by the Awaye of Awaye and Embeda Local Government Council area of Ibadan land in Oyo State of Nigeria. He, would con he would, could often be seen at various Nigerian religious, professional, networking, or social events in his homeland or anywhere in the world he traveled. This was especially true in and around the city of Chicago, Illinois, USA, where he would make his second home. Here he would be a pillar of the Nigerian community where he would become founding president of the Abaddon Descendants Association. Needless to say, his legacy will not soon be forgotten. And if you notice on the um, obituary, we actually have a Yoruba proverb. Ojoti abaku omoni adele, obaloke jeki omoa wo ile dewa. The translation is, after we die, our children replace us. May Almighty God let our children flourish. Thank you. I don't know if I'm tall enough to stand here. <laughs> okay. We are celebrating the life of Brogayo. And if I don't know this, Philip, I will forgive myself. Because I love him. And uh, the memories will linger. Love your family and the good ones you. The song will be in Yoruba. Nino Ayini, Awayokriya. No matter how long we live, death is something that we owe. And if the Lord tarries, we don't know the next person. But it's important for all of us to meet with Christ before we meet with death. Pray for me. Someone wherever he was going, um, and I loved him for how outgoing he was and how much he valued family. Um, yeah, um, even just the, the degrees that he's gotten and him becoming a doctor, he um, is just teaching me what it is to value education and value learning. He was always a learner and never stopped learning and I think that that's something that I have definitely gotten from him and my siblings do. We, we, he traveled everywhere, and um, I can't stop traveling because of him. <laughs> um, and he also knew the scriptures better than anyone I've ever met. If there was ever a question about like, oh, what was the story where this happened to Peter? He would know the verse, he would know the Bible reference, he knew, he knew that the Bible back and forth, and so and he could quote, quote scripture from his memory better than anyone again that I've ever met. And, um, yeah, I just um, love and miss and care for him so much. And um, I remember he taught me even about death at a very young age. I remember I was walking with him somewhere and he, I remember seeing like a squirrel or something and I was like, who did that? Like, who did it? And he was like, no, it's like, what? And he explained what death meant to me, and I feel like um, he's the first, one of the first people I've lost who's so close to me, and I think that he's even teaching me now. He's always teaching me, and um, even if he isn't here in the body, I know that he is um, with me in heart and with me in spirit, and he just will continue to teach me and um, be by my side in spirit as well. Good morning again. Uh, again, I just want to thank everybody who came out, everybody who called, um, everybody who sent the text video. Um, 
this was a day that I knew was inevitable, but nevertheless, not one that I thought would come this soon. Uh, but what, what really gave me the most joy was uh, writing the actual obituary, you know, um, in a conversation uh, with my brother last night. We spoke about how lots of people knew him, but how perhaps what I saw or the piece that I got was maybe different than the piece somebody else got. Um, and I see this service as a celebration, a coming together, if you will, of having you know, his legacy come full circle. Um, yeah, and I, you know, it's needless to say, he was my father, I loved him. There's this nasty rumor going around that I look like him. <laughs> but it's totally false. I'm way better looking. Uh, but, but no, it, I, I, it's, it's weird, true story. I grew up here in Chicago. I went to school in Florida. I've been doing a lot of traveling since then. Uh, and I came home a few months ago, um, and I walk into my great aunt's house, and I see one of my great uncles. And the first thing he yells out is Moses. So even my mother's side of the family calls me Moses because I look that much like him. And honestly, if I didn't open my mouth and speak without the accent, he probably wouldn't believe me if I said it wasn't. Um, but I, I think that's another uh, testament to who he was as a person. You know, he, he grew up in Ibadan, but he came here, you know, and wherever he went, he found love, he found family. You know, my mother and her family still consider some family. He still comes over for Christmas and Thanksgiving. And, um, yeah, that's just the kind of person he was. And so, um, yeah, just thank you guys for coming out. I'm so happy to see everybody be here and to, to have everybody celebrate his life. Um, I don't know if this is something you ever get over, but I think this celebration is definitely worthy of who he was. So, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Yemi Fatoki, and I'm brother Yos, um, cousin. And usually I don't like coming out to speak, but I think I owe him that I have to say something. But the, the kind of person that he was, when we were trying to um, I would get together with friends and family last week at the um, NG, NPO. So I saw someone there and said, oh, I didn't know you know Brother Yo. His response was, who doesn't know Moses? So that, that's the kind of person that he is. And he, he, he did, I did meet him till I came to the US, but from the minute I met him, he just took me like family, he took me under his wings. He got me involved in politics. We had um, a political action committee. We just did a lot. There is nothing that I did that Brother Yo was not there. Taking pictures and even three years ago, I remember I went to Mount Prospect to pick him up to go to my clinic in Ottawa to help us draw a fire and take pictures. All I did was go pick him up. He, he just gave everything. And even when we started the Battle of the Sentence Association, I remember my parents teaching us how to sing the Ibadan anthem, teaching us the origin of Ibadan. You know, his wife cooking and just going out of his way to make sure that everything was good. But you know, all of this does, does not really mean anything. The, the one thing that I would say, which is why I'm coming up here, is before he died, I saw him in the hospital. Um, in November, when I saw him, I was quite depressed and I was worried because, I mean, I know he was having a hard time facing what was coming. But when I saw him in December, I was so happy because I know that he had come to terms and that he knows God. You know, that, that's what gave me the most comfort. When, when I left in November, I was very unhappy when I saw him. 
But in December, when I saw him, the Sunday before he died, I was very happy. When my pastor and I went there, and the first thing is my pastor started smiling. And you could just see the peace in his life. And I pray to God that we shall meet again in eternity. But I just thank God that I was able to see that change in him and that his life was not in vain. Thank you. So what we'll do is after we've taken the families, then we'll open it up to everyone else and we would have these two minutes. But right now we're doing the families. Hello again. Uh, my name is Shady Akani and Uncle Ayo. Um, he was uh, he was one of my favorite uncles. Um, I uh, I think like everyone is still processing his loss. He was one of those people that when I heard his voice on the phone, I just immediately was in a good mood because he had that energy, he had that spirit that just would light up the space. Um, he was hilarious. <laughs> uh, I think I can't imagine, I don't think there was ever a conversation I had with him where I didn't laugh at some point. Um, I would also say that he has very strong genes. If you see his children, you can see a bit of him in every single one of them. Um, and I just want to share a story um, that, well, there are a couple stories, but I don't know if I should do the Mercedes one. Do I do Mercedes one? <laughs> so, okay. The first one is when my first trip to Chicago, um, and that was the first time that I physically met Uncle Hill. I had heard him on the phone, but it was my first time to actually meet him in person, and I was, you know, preteen. Um, and he had this old Mercedes that he loved, I think. In general, so I was born in the U.S., but my mom has been great at about raising us with the culture, and I definitely think Nigerians have an affinity for Mercedes, and my uncle Ayo was one of them. Uh, and so it was very, very old. <laughs> uh, and so we're in the car on the highway, and then we just hear something boom, and it is actually the tailpipe has come off of the car. <laughs> And you know, the whole time my mom gets really upset about Uncle, like, you know, kind of blasting the Mercedes. Why don't you get piece in translation, like, basically, why don't you get rid of this piece of junk, you know? Um, and, and so, you know, we pull off to the side of the road, he goes and retrieves the tailpipe <laughs> from, you know, thankfully we were in the far right lane, so you didn't have to cross traffic. Um, but it was just, it was hilarious and comical. And, you know, in the moment, others would have been mortified, but he just kept us laughing. I mean, he loved that Mercedes, you know? I'm not sure when he eventually got rid of it, um, but I think it was retired eventually. <laughs> um, another memory I have was much later, it was when I was finished, after I finished my undergrad, um, and my undergraduate degree, and uh, my Uncle Ayo didn't make it to the graduation itself, but he did make it to the party, because Uncle Ayo loved parties. Uh, and so he came, and again was the life, and just brought the energy, and you know, it was really wonderful. So then, you know, the night after the reception, um, you know, it's in the middle of the night, and then, you know, my Uncle Ayo's sleeping in the guest room that's kind of more towards the front of our house, and we're upstairs, and then we just kind of hear this, sound like banshees. The alarm was gone off, the house alarm was gone off. And again, this is like two o'clock in the morning or something like that. And you know, my mom and I were trying to figure out what's going on, right? You know, it's ADT, police calling, whatever. It turns out that um, my uncle I opened up the window, didn't know that we had this alarm system, right? So we come downstairs and then he just says, I was hot, I was really hot. <laughs> and again, a situation that would have been kind of like very um, disturbing, it just, you just have to laugh. Um, and that's the thing about Uncle Ayo is that, you know, he was just such a great man. Um, and I'm truly gonna miss having him in this physical life, but he is always with us. His spirit was so great and it is still here with us today. Um, and so, um, again, forgive me in my Yoruba, I do not, I have an American accent when I speak Yoruba, as you all heard, but I will say, Uncle Ayo, Sunre, Tioja, Tu, Atumpade. Your mission, as a faithful wife to your husband, Chief Dr. Moses Ayoridi Adebifi, you stood by him to the end. In moments of joy, the statement is this. You stood by your husband. In moments of trials and difficulties, 
His testimony is that you stay with him and was a helping hand that made him to overcome some of his difficulties in life. So on behalf of all his friends, members of the family, and the Nigeria community, Mama, I want to say thank you. Your efforts are not wasted. You are one of the women of faith and great example of faithfulness. My prayer is that the Lord of comfort will comfort and strengthen you. The Lord will reward you for good. Um, I know that our time is past spent, uh, and I know that so many do want to be here. Uh, but from everything that I've heard about this man, the story that came to my mind is what the story that I always uh, tell so many times. And this story has become a principle of life that I want to live by. It is the story about a seven-year-old boy called Johnny. Johnny lived with his parents in a countryside by a forest preserve. In the midst of that forest preserve, there was a rocky mountain. Johnny always watched his father going and climbing the mountain and coming back. So one day, Johnny said, Daddy, I want to go and climb that mountain with you. Daddy said, Johnny, uh, you are not strong yet to climb that rocky mountain. Wait for some time. And you know what children always say, why can't I do it? So Daddy said, okay, let's go. So they went to the forest preserve. And then Daddy said, Johnny, let me help you. He said, no, Daddy, I can do it by myself. But as Johnny was climbing the mountain, he stumbled and fell. He looked at his father and he cried. And on the top of his voice said, Johnny, you are a failure. Then to his surprise, a voice came back just like his voice saying, Johnny, you are a failure. Then he cried loud again and said, Johnny, you are a disappointment to your father. Then the voice came back again saying, Johnny, you are a disappointment to your father. Then he looked at his father and said, Daddy, what's that? Then daddy pulled him up. He said, Johnny, look at me. Then the daddy shouted on, his, on the top of his voice. He said, Johnny, you are my hero. Then the voice came back, like the voice of the father, saying, Johnny, you are my hero. Then daddy once again shouted, Johnny, And not your faith. Daniel, you're going to be a great man. And the voice came back again, like the voice of his father, saying the same thing. And Johnny said, Daddy, what's that? Then the daddy put Johnny by himself, said, Johnny, people call this echo. But it has a meaning in life. Whatever you throw at life, life will throw back at you. Whatever you throw at life, life will do what? Throw the same thing back at you. And that brings me to the short message today. And the title of my message today is your days are numbered. 
your days are numbered. Then I want to go quickly to the book of uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. In verse 1 of that chapter, the writer said, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, why the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Then amazingly, the, uh, uh, the writer used some funny words to describe how our biological and bodily function always gave us a signal that our days are numbered. He began by saying, before the sun and the light and the moon and the star are darkened, and the cloud run, uh, return after the rain, what was he saying here? He was talking to about our mental Somebody says that
writer concluded by saying, a man goes to the eternal home, and the mourners go about the streets. Our gathering here today reminds every one of us our days are what? Number. But when it comes to the life of our brother, father, uncle, friend, and grandfather, Chief Dr. Moses Ayolide Adebinbe, his days are no longer numbered. On Christmas Eve, December 25th, 2019, the clock ticked, the alarm sounded, the messenger arrived to escort him to home. Um, visited him uh, ten days before he was called on to glory was a rewarding experience for me. Although he had been unable to speak audibly, immediately he saw me in that hospital. So it's the top of his voice. He said, Pastor, he was excited. And as a Christian pastor, I did what I need to do. I do not need to preach to him. What I just said, I was rubbing his hand and said, Brother, speak to your Creator. Tell him what is in your mind. He's going to accept you. And then as I was saying that, we are interrupted by one of the uh, medical workers in the hospital, he, uh, she called us for a brief meeting, letting us know that uh, there's nothing they can do, we just need to go and prepare. After that, I walked in, and then he just smiled. And that tells me, even though I did not know what he told God, it must be a great meeting with the Lord. And based on what his daughter told me, on the 25th of December, before the daddy passed away, the daughter told him, without knowing that I've already told him the same thing, he preached the last gospel to the daddy. As he said, immediately she finished speaking, she breathed, he breathed the last breath. And that tells me that this man has reconciled with the Lord Almighty. You know, uh, Solomon who wrote uh, that chapter 12 of Ecclesiastes wrote in chapter 6. He said, did a man beget an hundred children and live many years so that the days of his years be many and his soul be not filled with good and also that he has no barrier. He said, an untimely birth is better than he for he cometh with vanity and departed in darkness. But that was not the life of our brother, Chief Dr. Ayoridi at the beginning. And that enabled me to go back to the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 36, when Paul the Apostle was saying about David. He said, David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on asleep and was laid unto his father. He said it's applicable to our beloved father, brother, friend, and grandfather today. We can confidently say, Chief Dr. Moses, I only did, and they did pay. After he served his own generation, he was called by God to come home. I remember, uh, you, you know, 
that I've been saying uh, your date and number. I've said this several times. And you can ask me, Cornelius, what about you? Are your date and number? That reminds me of uh, a story of a preacher. This preacher always go to Funda to preach. But one thing that was unique about this preacher was that he has a special gift. And that special gift was that when he was preaching, he will know who is going to die next. How did he know? According to him, during the time of his preaching, he will see a hand from heaven with a good hat. And then if the, the, the hand will drop the head on the next person that will die. Then uh, when we see, we see this, he will continue to preach loud. Oh, I'm not afraid of death. I that can come at any time. He has been doing this over and over and over again for very long years. But one day, one day, as he was preaching at the funeral, the hand came again. This time, not on anybody's head. Then you want me to do and jump around. Then he sang here to me. brother, father, friend, and grandfather, Chief Dr. Moses Ayorinde Adebimpe, we therefore commit his body to the ground, when I say as to as you, or to us, Wow. 
Family members and friends. Emma, she shame life for ya. Thank you.